Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Then check out Deal to Heal Teas. With our inspirational teas, you're sure to find something to inspire you. That's DealToHealTeas.com. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. Let's go to DealToHealTeas.com. Again, that's DealToHealTeas.com. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you enjoy the Girl Dad Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James, and I believe the relationship between a daughter and her father is one of the most important relationships a young lady can have. And therefore, my mission is to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by sharing the voices of girl dads to the world. So check out our podcast on every platform where podcasts can be listened to. And if you want to watch the podcast, check us out on our YouTube channel. Again, that's the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast with your host, Ernest James. Hey guys, this is Ernest James, host of the Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. And I got a question to ask you. Could you buy me a cheeseburger? Better yet, could you buy me a value meal? Yes? Well, guess what? I don't need a value meal. However, for the cost of a value meal, you can support this podcast to keep us on the air. Just go to Patreon slash Deal to Heal podcast and choose any one of the three tiers that's available. And if you just want to make a one-time donation, go to Cash App and make a donation to dollar sign E. James, the number 418. Make a one-time donation to the Cash App or, again, go to Patreon to support this podcast and keep us on the air. Thanks in advance. Be blessed. Welcome to Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. On this podcast, my guest and I will discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can live a life that is happy, healthy, and whole. So I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I am your host, Ernest James, and I believe that everyone can and should live a life that's healed, whole, and healthy. And therefore, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain, and to fulfill your purpose. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. If you haven't already, make sure you listen, like, subscribe, and share our podcast where on all of your social media and podcasts listening platforms, definitely our YouTube channel. Make sure you guys check that out. Also, check out our partner podcast, the Girl Dead Discussions podcast with E. James, who is myself, on our YouTube channel because we share a channel. So when you go to YouTube and look up the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast, you will also find the Girl the Girl Dead Discussions podcast on that same channel. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, also, I'm going to let you know how you can win $100 from the podcast, but you got to stay to the end in order to get that information. All right. So uh, last but not least, as you guys know, we are a self-sustained podcast and the way that we support ourselves is by bringing you amazing products for you to purchase in order to help us stay on the air. So our product of the week is our ebook entitled from males to men. It is the three steps of walking into manhood. It is a male mentoring book for young men uh, entering that, making that crossover stage in our uh, mid-teens going into manhood. Again, again, it's called From Males to Men. It is an ebook. It can be found at ebooksbyejames.com. Again, that's ebooksbyejames.com, as well as some other ebooks that you can check out while you're there. And that's our product of the week. Which is the ebook from males to men. So make sure you guys are checking that out. 
Okay, so today, just like any other day, we are blessed with a guest. Miss Monique, how are you doing? I'm well. Thank you for having me. I am pleased to be here. I hope that all is well with you. All is well with me. All is well with me. First of all, let me say thank you for being here because you could have been doing anything else, but you took our time to be here uh, with my listeners and myself, and we definitely appreciate it. So uh, do me a favor, Miss Monique, introduce yourself uh, to my listeners and tell them a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. All right. I am the Monique Duell, and I am the founder of Disability LLC here in PG County, where I help special needs families get services and resources that I didn't get when I was going through the process. So I simply am paying it forward. We do a little bit of coaching. We do a little bit of, you know, of social service type things. We're trying to get in the process of, you know, trying to get grants so we could provide like a one-time grant to help with maybe a bill or utility. So, we, you know, we, we're moving right along. Uh, I am an author as well. I have a few books, um, Grief is a Gangster, Caregiver CPR, Jeremiah the Jackrabbit, um, How Do I Handle a Special Needs Child, Handicapped Mom Lessons I Learned Through Cerebral Palsy. I am also a podcaster. My podcast is Having a Moment with Money. It's a solo show where I talk about my life as a special needs, you know, full-time caregiver, special needs mom to an adult son with CP. And we have ministry moments and nuggets of wisdom that God drops. It's not scripted. We talk off the cuff and we just let God do what God does in the hour that we have. It's been phenomenal. We're over a hundred episodes in. So that's it. I do I do a little bit of everything. I do, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. All right, all right, and I want and I want to learn a little bit about all of it, right? <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> let me say congratulations on a hundred episodes or more Thank you. Uh, of the podcast, because you know, as being in this podcasting space, um, we learn in the very beginning. Um, at least I was taught that most podcasts don't make it past episode six, right? And so the fact that you've made it thus far. You know, into the hundreds, I, I congratulate you. Just you in it for the Thank long haul. So I, I appreciate that because I, I, I start when I started. Uh, uh, shoot, I think we are on like a hundred and some episodes. So like two years ago, when I started, I started yeah. with a big, a big group. You know, and it was like, hey, we all together. Like, yeah, guys, let's do it. And then slowly but slowly, the <laughs> start doing it now. Good. So I had a, I had a, um, a podcast group. I still have it. But I had a podcast group, and in part it was like a hundred of us in this group. And by wow. of last year, um, I would probably say out of the people that's still active, like actively pursuing their mm-hmm. podcast, it's probably only like four. You know, Whoa, that's so, a, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, yeah. A, it's a high drop off. Everybody get excited, and then they realize how much work it is. <laughs> like, yeah, you know I'm doing this. <laughs> Yeah, because it is a commitment. Sometimes <laughs> I I be like, Monique, it's Thursday. Your show drops Friday. You have recorded a thing. You ain't said nothing. And I was like, oh. I sometimes I, I make it to the wee hours, bro. I'll be on the wee hours on Friday morning. And I let people know. I say, look, y'all, yep, I'm late. I'm sliding in before it posts the end. It's been a week. <laughs> you right, know, because right. I'm real transparent. But I, I, I love it. I like being able to, you know, get out whatever it is. You know that was that I saw maybe as a difficult thing or problematic, and then God sheds light on it and goes, "They really wasn't an issue at all." You know, this was what was going on, and this is how you got through. So it's amazing. You know, I, mm-hmm. I love what I do. So, yep, yep. So again, congratulations, man. I, I I love it. So let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. Um, before you started you know, uh, the foundation and everything. And I know it's part of your story. So if you can give us a little backstory of what it was that you were going through, because I know you said you didn't, you didn't have necessarily have the, the, um, services that you needed at that time, Mm -hmm. but you were going through, which kind of led you to start your whole movement. So let's go back a little bit and just tell us a little bit about, you know, your experience that led you to say, you know, what I know I went through this, but now I'm going to be the change agent to make it easier for the next person. Um, I this ability as well as Jeremiah the Jackrabbit were ideas that I wrote down years ago when Jeremiah was maybe five. He's 23 now to give you a snapshot. And I just threw it in my book and said, eh, you know, 
I was like, I don't want to start no foundation. I don't want to talk about special needs parenting because I was grieving it. You know, I didn't know how to feel as a Christian, you know, with a special needs child. They're like, okay, God is doing all this stuff. And everybody's looking at you, you know, saying, okay, well, you're doing all this stuff. You're in ministry. How come God hasn't healed your child? Listen, I'm not God. I don't have an answer for you. You know, we, we, I, all I can tell you is I have learned to trust God and I've seen God make progress in Jeremiah and things like that. I tell people all the time, healing, some things are a process and some things are immediate. It's what God wants you to see throughout the journey. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I didn't see none of it. I was just like, you know, any typical single mother. I was divorced. Um, I had went through a horrible divorce due to domestic violence. So I was already spent. The last mm -hmm. thing I wanted to do was tell somebody how to do anything. I was trying to figure out how I was going to get out of survival mode and finally live and not just be in this mode. If I have to protect myself all the time, I have to keep people at bay. I got to watch over my shoulder all the time and all that. I was embarrassed that my son had a disability because people made me feel that way. You know, um, as a woman, I, as women who have special needs children, and I'm speaking for myself, but I'm sure all the other moms can say that we deal with it our own self. We already feel like something's wrong with us or that we cause what our child is going through. So we don't need your help bashing us. You know what I'm saying? Right. We do enough of that of our own. That mom guilt will kill you. And it almost That's did. Enough. I was like, uh, well, maybe life would be easier, you know, if, if I take us out of the picture because I'm like, we're going to be a burden to our family because at some point I'm going to need help taking care of Jeremiah because he can't walk or bathe himself or dress himself. So now I have to sit here, try to ask people for help when it's already obvious, okay, that I need help and I didn't want to go through all of that. And I was feeling just ugly, you know, just ugly and just terrible. And I was like, at one point, I just thought the best thing to do would be to kill us both and just go on to be with God and just, pro, you know, and cut the middleman out. And mm -hmm. so when this ability came along, um, this ability came along again um, in 2021 after my grandmother and my sister died two weeks apart. Mm -hmm. um, she, my grandmother passed first and we were getting ready to head to the cemetery because we didn't bury her the same day. We buried her a week later. Um, and I got the call from my sister's father that she had passed. I wasn't even out the door yet. So now I had to go tell everybody, you know, on the mm -hmm. way to, you know, commit mama and tell them that my sister was gone. And everybody, it was crickets. You could just feel the tension and stuff. I was like, y'all stop being weird. You know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm here. I'm in this moment. I'm trying to be in this moment, you know, we, you know, honor my grandmother. I say, y'all making it weird when it's not weird. I know y'all afraid because y'all don't know how I'm going to react, but I promise you, I'm just in this moment, you know, with you know, watching them commit my grandmother and do all that. I just wanted to be there. I already knew that after that, I had to do this process all over again, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to be there. You know what I'm saying? Cause it just, it was overwhelming. I was suffocating. I'm like, Nope, I got to kick that out of my head for a minute. And I, and I did. And so after all of that was said and done and planning the funerals and doing all that, I was going through my closet cause I kept some of their, you know, things and my sister's things for my niece when she grows up. Um, the book fell out the closet and the pages fell out that had disability on it and Jeremiah the Jackrabbit. And I was like, why? I don't feel like doing this right now. I'm trying to grieve, Lord. I don't have nothing to tell nobody. I don't have nothing to tell nobody. I'm, you know, I'm over it. I'm over all this. I need time out. And it just didn't leave me. I just said, okay, fine. I still didn't do it right then and there. I waited till, like I said, the funerals were done and you know, all that stuff was settled. And um, I had um, a policy, you know, for my sister. So um, I had money left over from the policy. Well, I had money for the policy. And it was like I could hear her telling me, girl, if you don't go ahead and take mm -hmm. this money and start your business and stuff like that. Because she was she just used to think I could do everything. And I remember going to pick up the check and being in tears, bro, because I didn't want the money. I wanted my sister back. So I didn't even, ca even after I got the check, I didn't cash it for like three months. I got down to almost the 90 days where they tell you, you got to get another check. Yeah. And I said, fine, God. Okay, fine. And so, <laughs> so during that time, I had wrote grief as a gangster already. So I just went on ahead and, you know, got this ability started. 
And I released this ability, I think, the same day that I released Grief was a, you know, Grief is a Gangster and Jeremiah the Jackrabbit. So I kind of did a, you know, kind of combo thing. I just busted out the scenes because I was in this funk for so long grieving. And I was like, I got to get out because if I don't get out, I'm not going to get out. And okay. so, um, you know, started going to counseling somewhat and then, you know, did want to go to counseling because I was like, this is hard. Because they, 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 the deaths are so close together, I can't go, you know, I can't talk about one without talking about the other. And so I don't know, and I say this in my book, I don't know if there's such thing as double grief, but if it is, I'm doing it. I'm trying yeah. to, you know, balance my feelings and emotions from losing both of them because, you know, the relationships were were so um, close. I raised my sister from a baby. So that was like looking at my child. You yeah. know, in the casket. And I was like, if this what this feels like, I don't wish this on nobody. Right. At all. You know? And so and I was raised by my grandmother, so I'm a grandmother's baby. And my sister was my baby, you know. So mm. it, it's just that, you know, different. And I was like, How am I going to make it through this? I don't even know. And so even now, it's been what, three years maybe, and I have my moments. But yeah. it's you know, I, I'm learning, I'm doing the stuff that I tell y'all to do in my book. Right. <laughs> I'm literally doing the stuff that I'm telling y'all to do in my book. Um, and so that's counseling, you know. Right. Phone a friend when it gets to be too much, you know, and every now and then it does because grief don't and you know the grief don't ask you if it could come and visit you, it just show up unannounced and you know right. yeah. You, yeah. you don't know what you're gonna do in those moments. And so like today, I mean I had a great day today. Today is actually would have been my mother's birthday. So I did good today. I didn't even cry today or any of that. So it a win is a win, right? Right. So that's how, you know, all of this got started. It it was birthed through through I would say pain and mm -hmm. hurt. Um and just these feelings of, okay, Monique, you know what this feels like as a special needs mom not to know where to get help from and nobody knows how to relate to you because you're different like i'm not different i have feelings and emotions like you do i mm -hmm. just have a child that has needs that are not ordinary and so i didn't my my goal was not to let another mother go through what i went through and feel right. the way that i felt or should i say i feel because the mom guilt still comes every now and then too mm -hmm. um so i just decided to take all that energy instead of woe is me, why God, why, and pour it, and pour it out. Yeah. 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 You, you said a mouthful <laughs> and, and I want to go back <laughs> and, and hit on, and hit on a lot of different things. Um, cause I definitely relate in a lot of different ways. Um, uh, but one, one thing I want to say during the last couple of years, uh, even leading up to me, even starting the podcast, I was kind of going through my own journey. Right. And one of the things that God gave me was a quote. And that quote says, pain births purpose, purpose births progress. And progress is the evidence that God is at work. And so he uses our pain in order for us to make a difference. And so yeah. when you one of the other things that you mentioned about, you know, people looking at you as a as a Christian and saying, well, why did God do this to you? Right. And so it goes to a question that I'm I, I'm often asked is why do bad things happen to good people? And yes. I say bad things happen to good people. So good people can know that they can make it through bad things, because just yeah. as people, we're all we're all we're all human. So we all face the same challenges. We all have to deal with the same things. And so just because I'm a good person or just because I'm a Christian or just because I'm a man or just because I'm a woman, right. don't make me exempt from the challenges mm -hmm, of life, mm -hmm, like it's, it's coming. Mm -hmm. And so if you're that person that just seems like, okay, I'm trying to do everything right, but I'm still dealing with some stuff. Well, that's because you may be the one who's been chosen to show the other people that's trying to do everything right too, that they can make it through when something bad yes. happens, you know? And so that's how I tell people, you know, good, good people go through bad things because we have to be the example. And sometimes we choose it. And sometimes we're chosen, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I certainly did choose too, it. It's like, like, hey, that's that's who you are, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, going into another part, uh, I was talking to you a little bit off the air when we were talking about, you mentioned about the special needs. And uh, I was just even talking about my whole experience because I've been doing 
um, home health care for special needs persons. Um, for the last 10 or 12 years, probably more. I don't even know how long it's been <laughs> at this point. And even the um, the difficulties that, that we end up having during COVID, you know, when COVID mm-hmm. hit, because it was so new and so fresh and, and everybody didn't know how to deal with it, we went from, because uh, we do home, home health care, which is taking care mm-hmm. of the, the person inside their own home. And right. we went from a staff of maybe 10 to a staff of three, like overnight. Because everybody was like, "Oh no, we're not coming to work because right, right. we don't know, you know, we don't know what's what." And our clients actually had caught COVID at that time, and so we end up working. Uh, the three of us that was left end up working around the clock because they needed 24-hour care. So we end up working, you know, three shifts around the clock. The three of us for like two weeks, you know. And so, just in your own journey, how was that? You know, that you guys, some of the things that you guys may have had to deal with during COVID? Because I know, uh, I don't know if, if, if your son goes to uh, like daycare, not daycare, but the, the day center, yeah. things like mm-hmm. that, because that, they that shut all down. You know what I mean? There's a lot of, <laughs> lot of crazy stuff going on with that COVID. Yeah. Uh, my son was still in school then. He was at his last year. And of course, school shut down. So now we had to do everything virtual. He had one caregiver at the time. She's not computer savvy at all. And I was working from home. So imagine me trying to work his school thing on his tablet with his teacher and trying to show her what to do and sit at my computer with my students because I was a um, teacher, a teacher's aide at the time, trying to, you know, multitask. And I was like, listen, y'all, can we make this as simple as possible? Because his caregiver uh, does not know how to work a computer. She's not legally obligated to do this because this is not in her job description Mm -hmm. i have to work i can't sit here with him you know eight hours and then work with my student that's not going to work because i have to teach them you know and do grades and all that stuff it was wow i mean Mm -hmm. it was stressful I, i couldn't wait to go to bed like i never thought i would be so glad to go to bed and um and when then COVID hit us and I took the test because I, I don't, I don't, I'm one of those ones that when I get sick, I get sick. So when I started sniffling, I hadn't had a sinus infection in over 10 years. So when I started, I knew something was wrong. I didn't even wait till the other stuff happened. I go and take, I took the home test, you know, the ones they send you Mm -hmm. and it said negative. So I said, no, mm -mm, I ain't going to listen to that. So I went to CVS and took the test. Now, mind you, I didn't have one coughing or none of that. I just started sniffling. And it said positive. So I had it. I don't know how I got it because I was in the house all the time. Mm -hmm. I kept everybody away from my son. Nobody came in. Everybody would leave stuff on the porch or whatever. I don't know how we caught it. Mm -hmm. So about three days in, then Jeremiah had a fever. I said, oh, my God, I know you. (laughs) Lord, come on. I, you know, because at that point I was at the height of it. Um, I had the coughing, but I only coughed at night. And let me tell y'all, for people who don't know, if you ever had a cough where you started coughing and you could not stop until your body wanted you to stop, it was exhausting. I see how people get put on ventilators and stuff or have asthma. I did not know if I was going to end up in the hospital or not because that cough was a monster. I have never coughed so much in my entire life. Um, He had a fever and... Of course, I couldn't take him to the hospital because I was sick. So I had did the home test. His test came back negative, but I treated him as he had it. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, nurse, he didn't have any of that. He just had the fever. He had a fever for 24 hours and it left him. I was like, God, thank you. His caregiver caught it. Mm-hmm. So now she has it. I have it. And Jeremiah had it. So I'm the one trying to get out of bed to take care of everybody else. Weak as ever hot, feverish, all of that. And it and it scared me, bro, because that's these are the moments that we, especially these parents, fear. I don't care what they mm-hmm. say. The mere fact that I could not get out of bed to take care of my kid who was sick. I had to muster up the energy to get out of bed to go give him juice or give him soup when I was down myself. And then I was scared to go be in the hospital because I'm like, with this cough, are they going to put me on a ventilator or something? Then I'm going to be away from my kid. Nobody's coming over here to keep him. Right. Because he has COVID. Right. 
So it was the scariest thing I ever had to experience, just the possibility of what if this was it for me? What was going to happen to my son? And that's the one thing that I think is in the back of every special needs parent's mind that we got to deal with daily. Like, okay, God, am I going to die before my kids? If so, what do you, you know, God, do you have a plan? Cause I don't know what that is. I don't, we don't get to decide who goes first. You know what I mean? Right. And right. it was terrifying. Um, I almost went to the hospital because I was the last day I was so delusional. I couldn't get out of bed and I didn't really know why. And I decided to take my temperature. It was 104.9. I should have been out of here. Mm. I had never been that hot in my life. When you, If you've ever been that hot, you can't function. You can't walk. You can't get out of bed. You can't. You could barely see. So I knew something was terribly wrong. But by the grace of God, I said, look, I'm going to take this motion. If this motion don't make this stuff go down at least two points in the next 10 minutes, then I'm going to go to the hospital. I went to sleep and woke up, and I had sweated it all out, and I was fine. All right. Yeah, so it yeah. was difficult. It was difficult, and it, it, it oh, should I say it is difficult when you have a child like mine that that you have to do everything for. We nobody's volunteering to come and help me do anything. They don't want to change an adult diaper. Are you serious? No, they don't want to do no bathing and cooking and laundry. Mm -mm. Yeah, and that's yeah, and how I, it is for me. Yeah, and and I, I definitely understand because you know, like I said, we I was working with my uh, clients and both of them were uh, adult males uh, older than me. I think they were um, in their fifties, fifties, maybe even sixties. Um, and unfortunately, recently one of them passed away. They were twin, twin brothers and one of them passed away. Um, so, so sorry, but yeah, going through that, you know, the same thing. I have people, I talk to people that ask me what I do and I'm like, well, you know, one of the things of I'm on the list of things that I do, but one of them is I'm a home health care to, to special needs uh, adults, you know? And mm -hmm. I was like, well, you know, adult, adult taking care of an adult person that, you know, you yeah. have to clean up after and everything and, and wash them. And then like, I'm like, yeah, but it's, they can't do it. You know what no. I mean? So what's going, what's going to happen if there's not people like me that's willing to do it, you know? And so, but I do understand that it takes a special person to take look after special people, you know what I mean? And so I, I definitely understand that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, a little bit about you mentioned about the, the mom guilt, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, at the moment that we're recording this, I'm actually working with um, a young lady with a foundation called Help From a Sister. And the young lady who's over it, uh, Veronica, Veronica White is her name. She kind of came up like you with being a single mom and having to do all these things herself. And now she has a um, grandson who's special needs and he's nonverbal, you know. Mm -hmm. And so her organization has been to similar to yours, give moms the the things that she didn't have the tools that she didn't have right. the resources that she didn't have and so we're actually working right now on our very first uh annual it's going to be annual but we're working on a very first uh single parents conference here in chicago i don't and i'm not sure where you're located out of i'm in landover maryland <laughs> in maryland okay okay so we're here in yep. chicago and so we're we're doing this um event um for single parents you know, and one of the things that we are touching on is, you know, addressing disabilities, you know, how to go about getting the service and the resources that we needed. And uh, on one of our last meetings, we ended up talking to a mom who kind of expressed the same thing that you were as because her son is uh, at, at this time, I think he's only like, uh, he may be 10, you know, mm -hmm. uh, still a young man. And but all the things that he needs is new to her. You know, and she yeah. said how bad she felt and, and kind of hopeless, not hopeless, but helpless, you know, in these meetings mm -hmm. and talking about, I, uh, uh, I'll say EPK. IEP. Uh, IEP, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. You know, all these different things that she was like, she remembers sitting in this meeting and it's her, but then it's like 12 of these other people. Yes. And you're like, yep. you feel overwhelmed and helpless because you're trying to advocate on behalf of your child, but it's all new to you and you don't have the resources you know, and then they're not really compassionate enough to understand what, you know, what you're going through. And so, you know, definitely I, I kind of have an idea of, of that. So even if you can speak to that a little bit of how I know you say it still comes and goes, 
you know, but even if he was speaking to a mom that's kind of dealing with it right now, like my friend, you know, in the early stages of it, you know, just a word of advice or, you know, something that you could give a resource, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> that you probably can give her a little bit of encouragement that, you know, is 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 going to work out. I would say community, like when, when people talk about community, I think for people who don't understand the impact that community has, if we all be honest with our pain and help one another, we will get through it because mm -hmm. all of us have something that each other need. Yep. God made it that way. I mean, God built us that way. Yeah. Um, and so you know, the IEP meeting is one of the most dreaded things for us because they spend two, three hours telling us everything our child can't do instead of building on the one or two things that they can. I don't need you to tell me that my son is not potty trained. I know that I got diapers all over my house. My house look like a health care uh, storage unit. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to tell me that. I need you to tell me something else, you know, something positive. But that's not what it's designed to do. It's designed to to fix, you know, some of the areas to make them more independent, which may or may not make our lives easier. And so you will feel overwhelmed because you got the social emotional, you got the cognitive, you know, and, and then you got like the corrected age and all this stuff, you know, and all of that in between. That, that, that Those 12 people, everybody has something different. You know, the speech language pathologist, the eye person that looks at hand eye coordination. It's like you're sitting there looking like, oh, my God, how am I supposed to advocate on every area? You can't. OK, you have to you have to streamline and pick two goals maybe three if they're doable that because you don't know how your child feels see because they can't tell mm -hmm. you that i'm pretty sure if they could tell you that they'll tell you that they're overwhelmed as well so pick two areas and focus on them i don't care what they tell you that your child is doing or not doing you have the power so you can say hey okay listen no no no, no. this is what he's doing he or she is doing at home that i'm seeing progress in can we work further on that so that they can get to that part and master that. We're not even talking about on an educational level because we already know, okay? We know we know. They're not going to get a high school diploma. They're not, you know, more than likely not going to be able to go to college if they are like our children are. Um, and that's where the mom guilt comes in. We're like, are they, you know, are they ever going to have a regular life? Because everywhere I go, there's stacks of paperwork. There's four or five mm -hmm. team members, and you expect me to keep up with all of that and then try to be a woman, um, see life in a positive light, try to live and thrive and run a business. We want to be in love and be booed up and get married. Uh, you know, we want to go on trips and vacations and stuff, and we want to go on shopping sprees. But it's like our children and their disabilities chained to our ankle. So mm -hmm. everywhere we go, it's there. There's nowhere that we can't go that it's not there. And if she's like me, everywhere I go, God sends me somebody who has a special needs child. I'm like, God, I'm just trying to have a vacation. I, I'm just trying to have some dinner. I don't want to talk about that. And he's like, look, there's, look at her, look at her. She's hurting. I'm like, okay, God, send somebody else in here. You, all these people here, I know there's some preachers in here somewhere. There's other, <laughs> you know, other preachers, you know how we do. We be like, God, can we get a break? No, it's your ministry. It's what you do. It's like breathing. And so when you, you know, when you feel overwhelmed, take a deep breath, let the tears fall. I'm not going to tell you not to cry. That's mm -hmm. why we're sick, because we're not crying. We're trying to be strong, which is what I, what I, you know, we, we're going to talk about that. Uh, strength is not you not asking for help from anybody. It's suicide. Okay? It's not, that's not what strength is. Strength is saying, okay, uh, Brother James, I need you to pray for me because I'm overwhelmed today. I'm ready to go run my car to the water or whatever. I need you to pray for me. I'm having one of them type of days. That is strength. So yeah. take one step at a time and be patient with yourself. Understand that things happen to all of us. Like you said earlier, things happen. Even, even if you did cause whatever's happening, you can't change it now. So going around this deep hole and this, you know, rabbit hole is not going to help you. So when those thoughts come, you have control of what you do with the thoughts. You can kick them out. No, I choose to be positive. If you, you know, if you a believer, I choose to have faith in, in the word of God that says this, this and that. 
I am the righteousness of God. I'm fearfully, wonderfully made. My child is fearfully, wonderfully made. Because let me tell you, God has done some spectacular things through their, Jeremiah that they say he would not never be able to do in the first place. Mm-hmm. And so we have to look, we have to look for the progress and not keep looking at the can'ts. Because right. the can'ts is what brings the depression and the mom guilt and the suicidal thoughts. You got to keep looking at the cans like, okay, he's breathing on his own. He's not, he don't have tubes. He's going to the bathroom. At least I don't have to catheter him. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You yeah. got to take the moments yeah. and not, yeah. And that's how you continue to grow. Not to say that the thoughts are ever going to go away. You're a mom. It's, it's, it's part of who we are. We want to fix our children because we had them and we feel like it's our fault. So we got to do something. And so I would tell her, don't spend time overcompensating. I did it. That's what caregiver CPR is about in my book. That's part of what grief is again. Overcompensating will kill you. There's nothing you can do to fix your kid or make them better to the point of perhaps making your life easier. Because who's to say if they were normal, that your life would be easier anyway? Because it might have been another situation that God probably was protecting you from. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I definitely, I like what you said about community because that definitely changes everything, right? It does. You you connect with. And so I want to talk a little bit about grief uh, because I dealt with my own grief. And one of the ways that I got, came through was was community, right? I started going through uh, bereavement, bereavement um, Mm -hmm. sessions. And so I talk about my, my whole, ordeal and I won't necessarily go through all of it for the listeners' sake because they like we've heard it before. But <laughs> but um my my mother in law who at the time who I was very close to passed away and a little while after that my own mom passed away. And mm. so dealing with those two deaths um back to back sort of mm. you know and everything else that I was going through at that time, you know, I ended yeah. up having my own depression and everything to the point that I was having suicidal thoughts, you know, like, you know what, I can't take this no more. I'm, I'm just going, you know, leave it, leave it all. And so one of the things that helped me uh, tremendously was start going to the group sessions with the bereavement support and being in that room with like-minded people who understood what I was going through because they was going through it too, you know, and, and even having those that were there who uh, had been through it, we kind of had been on, a, got on the other side of it, you know. And like you said, sometimes it, it comes and goes. So grief never stops, you know. That's why it's called mm-hmm. the grief, the grief wheel, because it's always turning, you know. And some days are easier than others. And I tell everybody, mm-hmm. my mom now uh, been gone for maybe ten years, and sometimes it feels like ten years, and then sometimes it feels like ten minutes. You know what I mean? Yes. And yes, I remember yes. they had a, uh, it was a situation here in Chicago some years ago where they had a um, situation with the cemetery. They were doing a lot of crazy stuff, stacking bodies and not mm-hmm. cremating people. And this is the whole nine yards. It's real crazy. But my grandmother is buried there. And so when this story came out, it was all over the news and everything in Chicago. And I'm like, oh, my God, let me call my mom so she can go check on you know things with my grandma. And I'm like, oh, right. You know, I can't call mom because mom's not here no more, mm. you know. And so it's, it's, it's like those days where sometimes you forget and then it's mm-hmm. like you know, that reminder, like, oh, man, I forgot, you know, because you're kind of going through, you know. And, and that comes even with some healing, even with that, to be in a place where you've healed enough that you can forget because you're not yeah. so emotional, emotionally attached and everything. And so that definitely the, the community of the bereavement support definitely played a huge part in me getting over it, as well as my friends and family who definitely came in and worked, you know, one-on-one with me to kind of pull me out of that space. And uh, I'm definitely grateful for it. Um, so I want to, I want to talk about this book because I, when I seen the name that grief is a gangster, I already was like, Oh, I definitely want to <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> and I know you, you even, kind of one of the things that you said earlier was um, that you were kind of like grieving. If I want to, I kind of say it in my way, but how I, I received it, like even grieving the life that you didn't have or what your right. life could have been, you know, right. like if I didn't have this, you know, mm-hmm. situation or if I didn't have a special needs son, if I didn't have this, 
maybe my life will be this way. And so we grieve what we we didn't have or no longer have. And I think that's a big thing with a, a lot of people sometimes and not even necessarily under the same circumstances, but because we get so attached to what we think our life should be, you know, and yes. I'm like, oh, I should have been this or, you know, get so attached to the things that where we thought we were going to go with our life. And then when things turn the whole 160 and you go in a different direction, then of course, then that grief comes. So now you're grieving the life that you didn't live because you was like, man, I should have been this, you know. So talk to us a little bit about the book and even maybe some of your experiences uh, with that kind of grief and how you kind of overcame that. Uh, the book I'm, I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about how to um, grieve properly. Uh, and I'm using the stories of the losses in my family to kind of navigate through the points that I made about community and, um, you know, seeing a therapist and why we, and why is it that we have such a hard time seeing a therapist? Why do we have to wait to the shoe drops? You know, we, we have such mm -hmm. a, a stigma in the community about counseling. You don't have to be back crazy to go to counseling. And in my book, I talk about just like you go get a, a pap smear, a mammogram for women. I'm talking about women and all this kind of thing, make mental health a routine, thing like you do your other services there's nothing wrong with going to get a check you take your car to get a checkup every you know every six months or you go get an oil change or whatever go talk to somebody you don't have to wait till your life gets out of hand because when it's gotten out of hand then it's gotten out of hand mm -hmm. and now it takes twice as much work to come out of that when the signs were already there leading up to that but because we've been taught to be strong and handle everything and, you know, oh, have faith. You can't spiritualize pain. You have to heal. You have to feel it mm -hmm. and deal with it. You can't scripturalize it. You can use scripture to help you through it, which means you have to literally go through it. But right. we think that we supposed to use scriptures or we supposed to use all these other, you know, invalid means to, you know, uh, gloss over the fact that we're hurting and we're grieving, it doesn't work. It's like watching a cartoon and you see the stuff stack up and then the feather comes down and bam, that's exactly what's going to happen if you don't deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to, as the, the show, did you have to deal to heal? You're not going to skip that step. God is not going to allow you to skip that step because you have to learn how to manage your emotions. We have them for a reason. They're indicators. We have them. Um, we're going to cry. If we weren't supposed to cry, God wouldn't have gave us tear dogs, men and women, mm -hmm. but especially men, you know, because we taught our boys to be tough. And that means not to cry or not to, um, you know, exhibit pain or whatever. That's yeah. ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with a man being sensitive and all that. But that's not what we tell our boys. We tell our, you know, and we tell our girls to cry and do all that stuff and take, you know, that's a whole nother show. But that's what the book is talking about. Um, my grief journey, I don't, I can't even explain it to you because it was, it was like a double whammy. Got punched in the chest, you know. Um, a lot of tears. Uh, I knew my grand, we knew my grandmother was gone, so that that it was no surprise there. Um, she was almost ninety, mm -hmm. so thank God for that. Uh, my sister, not 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 even, uh, not even no. I mean, she was going through some health issues and things like that. And um, the health issue is not what did it. She mm -hmm. had pneumonia and then the pneumonia did it. She was um, going through rectal cancer and she had the surgery to get the, you know, the bag and all that kind of stuff. And she was so overzealous to get home because she had a, she had a toddler. My niece was 15 months old at the time of her passing. And um, I think the bit, the it, it's hard to talk about because it's like, like, God, why? She had a whole kid. And so that comes with its own thing because, you know, she has this kid that, you know, that's my own, that's my only blood niece. And she's being raised by someone else because of some technicality that I still don't understand. Mm -hmm. And so she's in D.C. with people that's not even her blood. So now mm -hmm. I have to jump through hoops and stuff to see my own, my own niece. So that really adds to the grief. And, you know, that, that, that comes with a whole nother set of anger and things like that, because, you know, you could clearly see what's going on. 
And, you know, I can't really do anything about it on my end. I have to just accept it. And so, you know, the acceptance piece of grief is the whole is the whole crux of the thing. When you lose anybody, you got to accept that they're gone. And um, that, that was hard. Uh, sitting there for a second time in less than two weeks, looking at a body, you know, of somebody that I love. And mm-hmm. I couldn't do anything about it. And watching her daughter walk back and forth past the casket, not even, I mean, come on, not even realizing that that was her mother laying there. Those things are etched in my mind. And yeah. so it's like, where, okay, God, where is the justice in that? You know, and so for me right now, I think the biggest part of um, where I am with the grief journey is feeling angry to a certain extent about some of it. I accepted the fact that they're gone. I know I was there. You know what I'm saying? So that's not the issue for me. I just, when I have those moments when grief want to come, I feel angry because I'm like, why? Uh, and, I, and, then, and here's the thing, and I talk about this in my book, even if God told you why, it doesn't mean you're going to feel any better because mm-hmm. you still don't have who you want. Right. You, know, you still don't have the outcome of what you want. So asking why is doing what exactly? It's it's not, you know, it's not doing anything other than you voicing your frustrations to God and shaking your fist at him. So um, I have my moments. I'm OK with my grandmother being gone because she lived a full life. She got mm-hmm. to see her grandchildren, great grandchildren. She's been there for every pivotal moment I've had in my life. And I'm grateful to God for that. But my sister, she wasn't even 30. And so I'm like, okay, God, I'm still mad. We got to be honest. Yeah. God said yeah. he requires truth in the inward part. So there's nothing wrong with y'all going to God saying, God, I'm, I'm not happy about your decision. I'm not, I'm not happy about that. But I choose to trust you in the midst of it. Mm-hmm. So I'm asking you to heal my heart because I don't understand it. I don't. Yeah. And so everybody is, you know, they kind of like from afar, you know, because they look at me as the strong one. All of a sudden now I'm the go-to person. I got the juice, right? So they're like from afar, mm-hmm. like, okay, are you okay though? And my son, my oldest son, he is so on point and he is so in tune that I could be talking to him like this and he'll come over and go, come on, mommy, let's go out to eat or let's go do something. You're not okay. I don't even have to be crying. These are the type of people that you need in your space. And I talk about that in the book. You need people who can see you mm-hmm. beyond the smile. You need people who can see you and hear you. And discern when you're not okay. I can sit here and talk to you and say, Jazz, I'm okay. And because you know this now, you'd be like, nope. That's who you need. You need people yeah. that, that you can trust with your pain and with your trauma because you have to get it out. Go to counseling. Go to therapy. It's ne- Listen, it's necessary it, because you don't know what you're going to do. Like, I did not know what I was going to do when the when the waves of grief hit me twice. Right. And I have a special needs kid who talks all day, who says the same thing over and over all day, who needs stuff every, you know, couple of seconds. So imagine that. And you keep hearing him go, mommy, 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 mommy. And you're feeling the grief and you're feeling, you know, gut punched and all that. I had no idea. So that was the thing for me. I was like, I don't I'm not responsible for how I'm going to react. So I need the tools to to be able to manage. So y'all won't see me on the news and I don't even remember what happened. Right. So yeah. don't wait till the shoe drops. You you know that I don't care. If, and it, it, it doesn't have to be losing a loved one because when you lose a loved one, you get triggered by other things. I had childhood trauma that was triggered as a result of the grief. Because I'm like, okay, my mom is gone. Uh... I feel guilty because even though she didn't do everything she should have done life insurance wise, I should have came behind her and made sure she had coverage. Cause after all, I am her daughter, but that's not really my responsibility. Not, 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 not as a law, but in my mind, it's like, I should have been better prepared to be able to help her out if she was in that situation, but I wasn't working cause I couldn't because of my special needs child. So here I go. Mm-hmm. Mom killed all over again. Why, God, why did you let me have a special needs kid? If I didn't have a special needs kid, then I would have been at work. Then I would have been able to buy her life insurance policy. Then I wouldn't have to have her cremated. We didn't have a fear. 
I saw her in a body bag. They unzipped it. I looked at her and all that kind of stuff. That's all I got in a box. Mm. So these are the things that I'm talking about in the book. Grief triggers a whole lot of other things. It's not just you losing somebody or losing a job or losing a relationship or a marriage. I did all of that. So it triggered all of that. It's like it just kept going from one thing to the other. I just felt like I was just getting beat up and bullied. Yeah. So that's why yeah. my book is called Grief is a Gangster. And it's drawn that way like a, a, a gangster and the, and the woman laying on the ground like a pimp with a gangster stick. Because that's exactly how it feels. Mm-hmm. And so get help. Like, seriously, I don't care if you feel like it ain't all that. By the time you feel it, it is all that. That's why you're <laughs> feeling it. It, yeah. it is that serious. It, it it really is. And to be able to talk to somebody who has no connection to you and don't know you and can't go where well, they can go gossip if they want, but what's the chances of them talking to somebody that actually knows you to tell all your business? It's so free right. because there's no judgment there. I could tell her, look, I don't care. I don't like life. I'm I'm not I'm not feeling life right now and I don't you know, I still think sometimes that I'm better off in heaven with my mama and my grandmother and my sister. And then and they understand it. But I say that to my family. Oh my God, we gotta call the prayer warriors and they trying to, you know, <laughs> do all of these things that's not going to be helpful, that they think is going to be helpful. You can't you can't save me. I have to save myself. Mm-hmm. I have to put the oxygen mask on my own face. You can only sit there and help me put the oxygen mask on. It's up to me to take it and physically put it on my face and breathe. Right. And that's what the whole grief thing is about. You gotta you got to do it for yourself because it doesn't, it comes uninvited, unannounced, and it comes with fury. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and I agree with you uh, 100%, uh, definitely. And just from my own experiences, you know, like I said, sometimes it felt like it was a long time ago and sometimes it felt like it was a couple minutes ago, you know, and it, it never stops. And, but the main part is to get the support to get the help yeah. that you need, you know, and don't be afraid of it because again, we all have emotions and it's something that we all go through, you know, and even as Christians, one of the shortest, uh, shortest scriptures in the Bible is Jesus well, you know, but that so what makes us think so cry. Much, right. It has so much weight <laughs> behind it. When you look yeah. at it, like he was, he was a man, he felt emotional, he was hurt. Yes, he was in pain yes. the same way we are. And if that's how it was okay for him to express it, why would you think it's not okay for you to express the same things when you're dealing with the same thing? So we definitely want to make sure that we're we're dealing with the grief and not just kind of push past it because when it shows up uninvited, that's when you're really going to have problems, you know? And yeah. sometimes it does. Like if you keep on trying to push it away, push it away, push it away, it's, it's his oh, own person. Sorry. It's only going to stay mm-hmm. back so long. And it's like, you know, look, you're going to deal with me. And if it come out at the wrong time, like you said, and it you, does, you know, you'll be just like, you know, out overwhelmed. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and one of the other things that I say in my book is stuffing is for turkeys. Mm. We're not meant to stuff. If you get, I say this a lot, and I even say it on my show. If you get one micro size speck of dust in your nose, you got a whole cold or a whole sinus infection. So that should let you know right there, we were not meant to carry the weight of these burdens and grief and stuff we're not designed for that we're not and so you can't keep stuffing you're gonna be like florida evans or worse you can't keep stuffing pretending that you don't feel it your body the mere fact that your body is doing what it's doing it's mm-hmm. telling you that it's grieving your body is telling you that it's grieving it shows up in sicknesses it shows up in insomnia it shows up in depression it, you know it, it shows up in over oversleeping or not sleeping enough your body tells you all the time that something's wrong with you and you still go and and most of us got good insurance and still won't go to the doctor go figure (laughs) you know we we got you know what i'm saying we got good insurance you know we still don't go we like uh i'm good i don't need medicine oh i'm good i don't need therapy yeah yeah you do everybody does there's not a person other than infants that you know that that's ten and up that doesn't need therapy or somebody to talk to. We all need somebody to talk to, and to be able to confide in and have a community. We need these things. We need each other, whether we believe it or not. We were not God did not create us as islands. Right. We need each other. Like I said, there's something you bring to the table, and there's something I bring to the table. Even if we did the same thing, we bring a different perspective to the table that each other never thought of. 
Right. So embrace the community and embrace the, the services and the resources that God has given us to be able to thrive in this life. Because whether we like it or not, we still going to cry after this. There's something else going to happen next week, next year, whatever, that we're going to cry about. Yep. We're going to have to go through something or deal with some sort of issue or, or sickness or illness. So why not prepare yourself and, and, you know, be at your optimum best so that when it does come, you, you, you know, even if it's devastating, like in our cases, you still have the tools to be able, and you're not running off of dust and fumes and stuff. Right. Yeah. 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 Man, Monique, we can, we can go on a whole nother hour, right? I know, right? (laughs) But I definitely, I definitely appreciate you coming on and and sharing with us um, um, your expertise and, and your wisdom. I want you to have the last word, right? And I want you to leave us with a word of advice, um, motivation, however you feel, you know, on your heart. And definitely leave us with your um, social media handles and things like that where we can definitely find you and um, follow you, right? So I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about that. Um, to my listeners, thank you guys for, again, tuning in to the Deal to Hill with E. James podcast. Make sure you guys are checking us out at our websites, at our dealhillfulfilled.org, which is our main website where you can find more information about me as a person, as a speaker, as a uh, um, workshop facilitator and things of that nature, as well as some things about the podcast. Um, everything earnest <laughs> and and uh, dealing and healing, you'll find it at dealhillfulfilled.org. Also, make sure you guys checking us out at Deal to Heal Tees, which is our inspirational t-shirt line. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That is our tagline. Make sure you guys go check us out at Deal, the number two, HealTees.com. And last but not least, uh, our eBooks can be found at eBooks by eJames.com. Again, our product of the week today was our eBook, Males uh, from Males to Men. So you can find that eBook as well as the core four, which is the core four values that every daughter should get from her father. That ebook is also there as well as some others, but that can be found at ebooks by ejames.com. Make sure you guys go there and check us out. Also, I've been blessed to be a part of an organization called the Forgiveness Mission. And one of the things that we do, we have free virtual workshops every quarter of the year. So whenever you're listening to this, either one just ended or one is coming up. So make sure you guys go to forgivenessmission.com in order to find out more about the free virtual workshops on forgiveness. What is forgiveness? What is not? Who is it for? Forgiveness of self, forgiveness of others. We address all of these different areas of forgiveness. And it's absolutely free and it's virtual. So you can take it right on your phone or on your laptop in the comfort of your own home. So make sure you go to forgivenessmission.com to see when the next workshop will be, or just go to Eventbrite and look up Forgiveness Workshop, and you should be able to find us there in order to register. Uh, Last but not least, I told you guys that I would tell you how you can win $100 from the podcast. You can win $100 by becoming one of our, by entering our super subscriber contest, which means you must subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our first, our Facebook page, and to our podcast on Spotify. And after you've done those three things, text the word WIN, W-I-N, to the number 866-326-0730 to qualify to win $100. The contest is random and is ongoing, which means once you're in, you're out, you can always win. You don't never have to re-up. At any time, we can pull your name and you can be our next $100 winner. Also, make sure when you text the word WIN, W-I-N, to the number 866-326-0730, that you also leave your name, your phone number, and your email address so that we can contact you and let you know if you are our $100 winner. A lot of people are texting the word win, but you don't leave us with no information, so we can't call you back. So make sure you leave your contact information when you text the word win to the number 866-326-0730 so that you can, we can contact you if you are our $100 winner. That being said, Miss Monique, once again, let me say thank you so very much for being here. Thank you for sharing you uh, for your story me. and sharing your, your expertise with us. I want you to have the last word. So now the floor is yours. 
All right, guys, you can follow me all over social media. I'm Monique Door everywhere except for IG, which is on the screen right there. I'm on Facebook, um, Clubhouse, uh, X, uh, my YouTube channel uh, is also Monique Door. I also have a link tree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash my name. That's where you will find um, links to all of my books, my hoodies, my merch, um, some of the appearances that I've done thus far, even if you wanted to donate um, to uh, Disability, the cash app is dollar sign Monique Duel. Um, our podcast is also up there having a moment with Moni. We stream every Friday live at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on HOD Radio Network, all the way from Benin, Nigeria, but it streams everywhere. Um, following the um, ending of the show. So you guys go on over to Spotify, wherever your podcasts are streaming, and like, share, subscribe. We would love to have you. You get to ask questions or leave feedback at the end of the episodes. I answer all of my emails and all of, you know, my inboxes and things like that. Just off the home on there being crazy, y'all, because, I mean, it's been some real interesting ones. But I love you guys. Thank you for your love, prayers, and support. And as a word of encouragement, I know, y'all, that things are not what we thought that they were going to be. Your life might not be going the way you saw it or see it or whatever. Life is life. And remember that, but God is still guiding. He has not forgotten to do not one thing concerning you. Keep the faith and don't let anything or anyone silence your voice. All right. All right. We can't end it no better than that to my listeners. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to the deal to heal with E. James podcast, where our mission is to help people to deal heal and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain and to fulfill your purpose. Until next time, you guys be blessed. Hey guys, I know you're enjoying the podcast. However, don't forget to join our text line at 866-326-0730. That's 866-326-0730 in order to receive text messages with new events and things that is going on and new episodes as they release. All right. See you in a minute. Thanks for listening to the deal to heal with E James podcast. Remember to listen, like subscribe and share. This episode has been brought to you by deal to heal teas. Put some inspiration in your situation. Wear an inspirational tea and be inspired all day. Let's go to deals to heal teas.myshopify.com. Remember, our mission is to help you to deal, heal, and fulfill. Deal with your problem, heal from the pain, and fulfill your purpose. Thanks for listening.